Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany of Tiffany Outdoors and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about how I breed crickets for my bearded dragons. I've got two of them and they consume quite a few crickets on a weekly basis. So what I've decided to do is go ahead and start breeding them and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. Okay, so I have one of these containers here. It's just a regular container that you get when you get Chinese food. I save those and clean them out. And then what I do is I use cocoa fiber. You can buy these at most landscaping stores. It's pretty expensive, but you can also reuse it. So I take a small, one of these small butter containers and drop that in my container there. And then next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all wet and soak it up. Get it good and wet. What I use for the water is this regular tap water and I use one of these garden sprayers. This makes it so easy to get this thing watered up. Makes it easy to get the crickets water too. which I use a wet sponge. It's the safest way to water them without them drowning or the environment getting way too wet. So once I get this stuff wet, I just take a wooden spoon and stir it around and make sure I got everything wet. You can see these light bits that are still dry. With all that water I put in there, we still got some dry material in here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this stuff into a bigger container to make it a little bit easier to stir this stuff up. See all that underneath there? All that is dry. It's not even wet. Putting it in this larger container will help me get it wet and stir it up better. Okay, I got this well mixed up and it's not overly wet and I'll show you what I mean. I got a handful of it right here. Nothing dripping, but when I squeeze it, you got all that water coming out. So this stuff retains a lot of moisture and it is just absolutely perfect for crickets to lay their eggs in. Just got to keep in mind that you don't want it dripping wet when you pick it up. And when you squeeze it, you should have lots of water coming out and there shouldn't be any dry bits in here. You got to keep in mind that this right here is going to be out in the open. And over time, it will dry out a little bit. But what we'll do is before we put this in the incubator to incubate the eggs, we'll moisten it the top of it. The top will get a little bit dry, but the crickets are going to lay their eggs deep down inside the dirt. The next step is I'm going to put this back into this container. It may not all fit in here, and that's okay. That's perfectly okay. I don't want to overfill this because when the crickets get in here, they're going to be digging in here. They're going to be sticking their heads in there. They're going to be digging holes. The males try to get in there and eat the eggs. Sometimes even the females will. And they'll kick this dirt out all over the place. So I'm just going to pack it just a little bit, just kind of lightly. And that's how I'm going to put that in there. I've got my cricket bin set up. I've got their egg crate here. I've got the cut sponge that I use. I get the sponges from the Dollar Tree. And all I do is just cut them into four pieces and wet, it, wet that. And then I have their food here and I also give them fresh vegetables too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this tub that I have and put it right in here and what I'll do is I'll tip that right on there so they can easily get in there. And now I'm going to put my crickets in and most of the time the females will go to laying the eggs almost right away. Okay. 
seeing a lot of pretty big size females. Got a couple dead ones, but it's okay. I'd expect one or two dead ones. Got some eating right away. And probably in about another 20 or 30 minutes, the females will be in there laying their eggs. It's only been about five minutes, and as you can see, the females are already in there laying eggs, digging around. What I use to incubate the eggs is a regular chicken egg incubator. I got this at Tractor Supply on sale. I think it was like $35. Normally, they're like $40, but I got it on sale. This is all I use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that bin in there for probably about two or three days. And then I'm going to take the bin out, mist the top of it, get it moist again, put the cover on it. I don't poke any holes in it for air holes or anything like that. They don't need it. There's plenty of air in there. Once I put that in the incubator, in three weeks I'll have babies. And what I'll do is I'll set the babies up the same way I do the adults. And that's it. The only other thing that I do is I do monitor the temperature inside the incubator with one of these. I got this from Walmart. I think it was 12 bucks. And I put one in inside the incubator. There's like a little inlet here that you can put cords and things for this very thing. Just leave that in there. Put my bin of eggs in there, and three weeks later, I'll have babies. Hello, everybody. It's three weeks later. The eggs have hatched, and now it's time to take them out. And this right here is the thermometer that I was using for the incubator. That's over there, and the incubator is right here. So now, it's time to get those babies out of there and get them set up in their, their growing bin. What I'm doing is setting the whole container inside the bin and then I'll take the lid off. I've got them set up in their bin. I've got clean water or a watering sponge. And what I do with the baby sometimes is I'll put down some paper towel and just moisten that and they'll drink from that also. And I have their food in their egg crate so they can hide in. The thing about baby crickets is they can drown so easily. So it's very important not to leave even a water droplet. They will get in that thing and drown. So you have to be extra careful with the babies. So now I'm going to take this lid off. that out make sure I don't have any trapped babies in here it's hard to see them and it's hard to get them on film because they are so tiny they're like the size of ants they're so tiny this is probably even pointless trying to show you guys how tiny they are But they're in there. They're in there. Let's see if I can hold this up. Ah, oh, there you go. It's blurry, but, but you can see. There's hundreds of them. Hundreds. And this, this container will continue to hatch probably f over the next week or so. And I'll just leave that in there and they'll all eventually hop out of there or crawl out. I can take that egg carton and put it up there. Another thing you can do is take a piece of paper towel and put that down. And then they'll have something to crawl out of it on. It's kind of like a little bridge. And they'll, they'll all eventually find their way down and out of there. And then, after about a week and a half to two weeks, then I'll take this container out because it'll be totally dried out. 
I'll take that out and as the babies grow up and get big enough, then I can feed them out to my bearded dragons. I want to thank you for joining me on this episode of Tiffany Outdoors, bringing it to indoors today. I'll see you later. Bye.